In this video, we're going to go over a brand new feature in Unreal 5.2. We're going to take a look at how you can utilize displacement with Nanite. This is shown very briefly in the Unreal Feature Showcase, but we're going to take a look at this in more detail. It's a feature I'm really happy with because it does save you a lot of time. It allows you to easily add details to our meshes using displacement efficiently and directly in Unreal. So if we take a look at this patch of wooden planks in Unreal that I have here, it's really just a flat plane that I took and then use displacement to add detail to it directly in Unreal. And this saves us quite a few steps of having to go to another software and do that. And if I zoom in really close, you could see that not only are these planks detailed with a texture map and a normal map, but the geometry of some of these bolts or screws and things are actually bumping out of the surface and we get depth and actual shape being kind of modeled in here from our displacement. So if I were to quickly just jump on over and look at this in wireframe view, you can see how detailed the mesh is. You can see that knot or that dip in the wood here actually being kind of detailed in with geometry. So this is really cool being able to do this directly in Unreal. And it's not just storing it as kind of any type of geometry that just sits here. It's storing it as nanite geometry. So that's Unreal's virtualized geometry system where it stores polygons in a way or stores individual triangles in a way where they're clustered with a bit of a hierarchy so that it can be swapped out and swapped in on the fly, depending on how close or how far away you get from the mesh. So I have my textures, herringbone, uh, diffuse, displacement, normal, very simple, and a uh, material that I've applied those textures to. And then I applied that material to this kind of static mesh two meter patch, which I'm just gonna throw in here and put a little bit above the ground. And very simple geometry, nothing on that mesh. It's just two triangles, extremely simple. And if I open up that static mesh and take a look at our static mesh editor, you'll see I have Nanite support on. You might have that off by default. So if I turn that off, um, then we won't have a bunch of settings here. But we're going to go through these settings. And if you don't have Nanite on, you're just going to see uh, triangles and vertices count up here. And that's, that's really it. And if you turn on Nanite, you're going to see... So I check that on, apply. Now I see that we have not only fallback triangles and fallback vertices, but nanite triangles and nanite vertices. And this is important because if you're on a device that doesn't support nanite, it can't use nanite. So it's going to fall back to its original mesh. So it's important to make sure that your fallback triangles or your mesh for falling back from nanite exists. Otherwise, it'll become super heavy on devices that don't support nanite. Now, if we want to make this have displacement and have the mesh turn into something more detailed than just these flat two triangles, we have to enable our Nanite support. And we're gonna go through a bunch of these settings here. So the very first one uh, below that is preserve area. Sometimes when making things a Nanite mesh, they have a lot of fine, small details. When you move far away and it simplifies or swaps out those polygons or triangles, sometimes it loses a bit of volume or shaping turning on that preserve area kind of helps retain that a little bit. So you could use that in some cases if it helps make your mesh look better from far away. Now, next we have position precision and normal position precision. This is the precision of the vertex positions and norm normals and vertex normals. You can leave this default. I, I probably wouldn't really ever change it unless you need really high quality precision on your displacement. Then maybe you can set these to lower values. You could specify precision of like 1 16th of a centimeter or even lower. But generally auto works fine for that and you don't really have to change it. And same goes for the normal precision. And then next we have the minimum residency. This is how much memory or how much space this mesh is going to take up in the memory at all time. So normally with Nanite, it will swap out details of your mesh from your hard drive, ideally a solid state hard drive, a hard drive with a quick read and write speed. It'll swap out details in and out of your disk into your graphic card and into 
the game very quickly as you get closer to your geometry or further away. But this is how much of this geometry or how much space of this geometry retains in your graphics memory at all times. And minimal or the default here is set to minimal. That's usually what you want to leave it at. I don't really ever change this. You only really need to change it or increase it if you notice some of your nanite meshes are popping out or popping in or having weird popping issues. Then sometimes upping this can help resolve that issue. Next, we have our keep triangle percentage. So the way that you can think of this is almost like a decimation control. If your mesh imported or generated is super heavy and dense, you can reduce the slider to decimate it to a lower amount to make it more efficient for disk space and for nanite. Now we also have the trim relative air. So trim relative air will be important for generating uh, a mesh from displacement. So when we use our displacement map on here, we'll have to lower that amount to generate enough polygons to add details. So the trim relative error is kind of like a precision setting. Higher values are less detailed, but more memory efficient. Lower values are more detailed meshes that it generates, but heavier polygon wise, therefore less memory efficient. And then finally, we have our fallback triangle percent and our fallback relative error. And the fallback triangle percent is pretty much going to be a control determining how dense the fallback mesh is if nanite is not supported. And then the fallback relative error is what level or what kind of discrepancy of silhouette or sizing relative to the mesh is okay um, for the fallback mesh. So essentially, if you set this uh, fallback error, to a larger value that means it's more flexible in how much the silhouette can change and it will keep reducing the mesh until that threshold is reached whereas if it's really low the mesh silhouette or the mesh shaping can't change at all so it's not going to be able to reduce it at all and your polygon fallback mesh will be the same as your nanite mesh and you don't want that and i'll, I'll go over kind of an example of why you don't want that so let's take a look now at how we can apply our displacement map to this mesh and generate the, the displaced nanite mesh. So what I'm going to do now is put in that displacement map. So I'm going to go here, add a displacement map, open it up. We have to drop in our texture. So I'm just going to go here and pop in our displace, displacement map for a herringbone texture. Open this back up. You have to define a magnitude or how much it needs to push out. I'm just gonna to put to five, that's probably pretty extreme, but let's give it a try. Now, before I click apply, very important that we set our trim relative error. If I leave this at one and click apply, the mesh pushes up, but no details get added. It's exactly the same as it originally was. No polygons uh, get added if I look at the wireframe and the counts up here for nanite triangles and vertices stay the same as the fallback. So we have to lower this amount to generate more polygons in detail. Point 0.1 is going to be quite a bit, so I'm going to do that. And I'll click Apply. Now we'll see that it generates 11,000 triangles for Nanite. And if I look at the wireframe, there we go. It took that herringbone displacement and pretty much made uh, the vertices offset and tessellate the mesh in an efficient way to add those details. So really cool. But the problem up here is even though this may seem okay, there's a big issue with this. Your fallback triangles are 11,000 vertices. Your nanite triangles or nanite vertices are like 7,000. Right now, my fallback mesh is the same as a nanite mesh pretty much. And that's not very good. That means if nanite's not supported, it falls back to a super heavy mesh and the performance just goes terrible. So we don't want that. We need to make sure our fallback triangles are that original flat plane with barely any detail or something at least quite a bit lower than what we have here for our nanite displaced mesh. So what we're going to do here is currently our fallback triangles are so high because if you look here, my fallback relative error is zero. It doesn't allow for any 
discrepancy in the silhouette. And my fallback triangle percent is 100% of all triangles. So full quality. So that's really bad. We need to change that. Usually what I'll do is rely on the fall by, fallback relative error. So if I set this to something like 0.5 and then apply, let's watch what our fallback vertices go to. They go to 400 polygons, 400 vertices, 600 triangles around there for our fallback. So now it's much more simplified fallback mesh. Now, why am I seeing all these artifacts pop up? This is because now that our fallback mesh is a lower amount of polygons, what we're seeing here is shadows from our proxy or from that fallback mesh being casted on our nanite mesh. And this is because right now in this project, I have ray tracing enabled. And if I go here to ray tracing, currently this mesh says supports ray tracing. But the problem is nanite does not support ray traced shadows. If you're using nanite, ideally you want to use virtualized shadow maps, but you're not going to have proper shadows on nanite meshes from ray tracing. It's just not supported. That doesn't mean you can't use ray tracing and nanite. It just means that nanite will not get shadows from ray traced lights. So I want to turn off support ray tracing because nanite meshes shouldn't. Um, they, they don't have support for ray tracing. So you should turn that off and then that will fix that issue. You won't see your shadows from your proxy or your fallback mesh on your nanite mesh. So I turn off support ray tracing that fixes that issue, but we still have a little bit of a problem here. My fallback triangles is 600, fallback vertices is 400. That's still a bit high. So if you really want to reduce it to the lowest amount, like our original mesh, I'll set the fallback triangle percent to zero. I'll set the fallback relative error to one maybe and click apply. And now you can see fallback triangles are 64, fallback vertices are, are 51. And you can play around with that number, see kind of how that changes. It changes it slightly, like go super high. You can reduce it a little bit more, but that's that's probably okay. So now that we have all our displacement setup done, we can just save or close this and we see our displaced geo in our viewport. If we go to the wireframe and zoom out and zoom in, you can see it optimizing and reducing or becoming more detailed as we get closer. So much better than traditional displacement, much more uh, efficient. And finally, if you have any directional lights or things, just make sure that ray tracing shadows is set to disabled if you want to get shadows um, on your mesh. So this is pretty much the displaced herringbone brick texture and pattern that I have here. So not too bad. And if your meshes are tileable textures or patches like this, um, you might get lucky and you might be able to also tile the displacement like this. And this is pretty cool because now I just have like a, a seamless modular kind of herringbone brick that I could just copy and paste and place throughout uh, my level or scene. So that's really it for displacement with Nanite with uh, Unreal, but hopefully it gives you a, a kind of rough idea on how to start with that and start adding some detail to your meshes and making sure that there's a sufficient fallback mesh if Nanite is not supported. If you learned something new or found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, press the bell button for future notifications of future videos, and check out the Patreon down below in the description, which all the Patreon members will get access to this PDF that goes over kind of everything covered in this video today in a bit more detail uh, with some extra bits of information as well. So that's available for download for the Patreon members. And don't forget to comment down below and also let me know what other content you'd like to see.